verses 8 through 11. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. How loud am I? Way loud. (laughs) Good morning, everyone. Let's open with prayer. Father, thank you for this day, and we ask that you would be with Alan and Sherry as they're away and help them have a good rest and to rejuvenate their lives and to be able to come back and pour out more love onto us. And we ask that you would speak these words today, that they would be glorifying to you, and we ask all this in your precious name. Amen. So, Alan asked me to bring you the message today in his absence. He's going to be gone for a few Sundays, and luckily you only have to put up with me for once. So I chose this Sunday because this is the best Sunday of the year, which is my birthday. (laughs) The Lord has laid the Sabbath on my heart to talk about today. I have a co-worker who challenges me to look at my life and is constantly asking me questions about my beliefs. We are always going back and forth on where our denomination stands on different areas of doctrine. First, I was going to teach about the Ten Commandments, but as I was looking through them, I came to the conclusion that I could outdo Alan if I did them all So, in my length of sermon. So today we're going to focus on Exodus 28. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Does that mean just not to forget to go to church on Sunday? The Sabbath in Hebrew means rest, which it comes from Genesis 2, 2 through 3. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. Because that in it, he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. So back to Exodus 20, 9, verses 9 through 11, lets, lets us know who should be doing done working and resting, as Corey had just read. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath day of the Lord. Thy God, in it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor the stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the seas and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. The Free Methodist Church is an offshoot of the Methodist Episcopal Church, which in 1858, some ministers and lay members were asked to leave the church because of their differences in beliefs in the doctrine and also believing that it was, wasn't right to charge for a fee for a pew. This brought about the formation of the Free Methodist Church. The Free Methodist Church is governed by the Book of Discipline. And I have a copy here. My sister put my stuff away. From 1947, that belonged to my grandpa, John Phillips. 
He was the preacher here of this church in 1958, the year I was born. 61 years ago today. He was standing here in front of this church giving the message, and I am honored to be doing that today. I pray I do him proud. So in here, in the Book of Discipline, for the Sabbath it says, the profaning of the day of the Lord, either by doing ordinary work with therein, or by selling, or buying or selling. Profaning, profaning the Sabbath is to make sure and keep it holy or sacred. The 1985 version of the Book of Discipline states, I will observe the Lord's Day in worship, Christian fellowship, and service, renewal of mind and spirit, avoiding all types of commerce, labor, travel, and pleasure, which distracts from the morals and spiritual purposes of the day. The newer version, as you just heard, says about the same thing, but has added travel into things to consider for the Sabbath. Sabbath travel is also talked about in the Bible. In Exodus 16:29, see, for the Lord has given you the Sabbath, therefore he gives you on the sixth day bread for two days. Let every man remain in his place, let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. This is while the, the, they were in the desert for 40 years and God supplied the manna on a daily basis. The Lord's the Sabbath day journey is also mentioned in Acts 1.12. They returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of All That which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. A Sabbath day's journey was about 2,000 cubits, which computes to be a little over a half a mile. Jewish law states that this was how far you could travel on the Sabbath. But this wasn't working out very well for people to get to church on the Sabbath. So they came up with a plan that you could go 2,000 cubits, and then you could stop and have a meal and pray, and this would become your new home, and then you could go another 2,000 cubits. So they, and this worked for a while, but then it became a little cumbersome to get through. So then they declared that all the city walls would be your home. So if you were in the city, that you could travel to and from church which made life a lot simpler. I have here my grandmother's concordance that I used for my research. I want to read a section out of it that explains a little bit about the Saturday or Sunday Sabbath. So God rested and hallowed the seventh day. By the Jewish law given at Sinai, the seventh day was to be a day of rest in which no secular work was to be done and which was to be kept holy to God. At a later period, the simple Jewish law of early days was added to by the traditions of the elders until the Sabbath rule became burdensome and in some cases foolish. It was against this and not against God's law of the Sabbath that Jesus set himself in his teachings and healings. The Sabbath one day out of each week was kept by the Jews on the day now called Saturday. How early this was taken to be the seventh day is not known. After the ascension of 
Jesus, the disciples met on the first day of each week for prayer and praise. The Jewish Christians for a long time kept both the seventh and the first. But as Gentile Christians, having never kept any such day before, celebrated any such day before celebrating only the first day of the week as the Lord's Day. The celebration of the seventh day by Christians was finally abandoned. Because of the rules that a long journey should not be made on the Sabbath, the short distance permitted about a mile received the name as the Sabbath day journey. The word Sabbath is often used in speaking of the rest of the fields from tillage The last little bit in there it was for the crops and for gardens. Leviticus 25, 2 through 4, it says, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you come into the land which I give you, then the land shall keep a Sabbath to the Lord. Six years shall you sow your fields, and six years you shall prune your vineyards and gather its fruit. But in the seventh year, there shall be a Sabbath of solemn rest for the land, a Sabbath to the Lord. You shall neither sow your fields nor prune your fields. Just a little extra tidbit in there. So this is what the 2015 version of the Book of Discipline says. So it's been revised a little bit through the years. God makes it clear in Scripture by both example and command that one day in seven is to be devoted to worship and rest. Jesus declared the Sabbath was made for people, not people for the Sabbath. We need a special day in which to turn from our daily work to worship God and to renew body and mind and spirit. The New Testament reveals that the early church moved from observing the last day of the week, the Jewish Sabbath, to worshiping God Christ on the first day of the week, the Lord's Day, the day of his resurrection. In keeping the Sabbath principles in a Lord's Day setting, we participate in corporate worship with the Christian community as the essential activity of the day. We refrain on that day from unnecessary labors and commerce and recognizing the salvation comes not from our own striving, but by grace as we rest in God. Pastors and others who must be involved in necessary work on the Sunday are encouraged to observe the Sabbath principles on another day. So, I've given you a little of what the Old Testament and the Free Methodist Church has to say about keeping the Sabbath. So now let's see what Christ has to say. First off, he summed up the commandments into two, which is found in Matthew 22, 34 through 39. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. And the, that's it. So, these two commandments tell us that God expects us, what God expects of us. First of all, put him first in our lives and love him with all that we have. And thank him for all that he's done and continues to do for us. We owe him everything. Second, 
if we treat others like we treat ourselves, the world would be a lot better place to be. He also shows us another example in Mark 2, 23 through 28 to 3, 1 through 5. So Jesus called them and spoke to them in the parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? Am I in the right place? I don't know. No, I'm not. Oh, I booked. I skipped. My bad. I should have wrote this out, maybe. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and he is in, and. As his disciples walked along, they began to pick some heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? He answered, Have you ever read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need? In the day of Abathar, the high priest, he entered the house of God and ate the consecrated bread which is lawful only for the priest to eat. And he also gave some of it to his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is the Lord even of the Sabbath. Another time he went into the synagogue, and the man with the shriveled hand was there. Some of them were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus. So they watched him closely to see if he would heal him on the Sabbath. Jesus said to the man with the shriveled hand, stand up in front of everyone. Is that it? Yeah. Then Jesus asked them, which is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? but they remained silent. He looked around and at them in anger and deeply distressed in their stubborn hearts and said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched out his hand and his hand was completely restored. Throughout his time on earth, Christ gave us many examples of helping and healing others along his life journey. He didn't care that it was on the Sabbath. In this case, we just read about the disciples were also gathering food as they went along. Leaves me to wandering. Christ was sent to this world to be the bridge for us to get to heaven. The only way to receive this gift from God is to ask Christ to forgive us our sins and start worshiping him. God sent Christ to make this sacrifice for sin so we no longer have to sacrifice burnt offerings to God. Christ came to fulfill the law. If we come to Christ as a true follower, we are not just fans who know all the rules, rituals, and stories, but a follower that reads the Bible, prays, and earnestly seeks the Holy Spirit's guidance in our lives. Growing up in the church, on Sundays, we got up early in the morning. We had cold syrup for breakfast and put on our Sunday best to come to church. Most men wore suits and women wore dresses. As I got older, I felt God should love me in whatever I came to church dressed in. And he does. But I was recently challenged by my coworker that I was coming to church on Sunday to worship the king, and he does deserve to be dressed up for, just saying. Back to my childhood. Sunday after church, we went home where my mother had prepared most of the meal the day before, and after our meal was a time of going to our rooms for rest, and we could read spiritual articles or the Bible. After this antagonizing, agonizing period of the day. I'm not a reader. 
as you can tell. We would sometimes go for a Sunday afternoon drive to see the countryside or go visit someone. Not always the quietest trip with six kids. Then we would go back to for church for evening service, which I did look forward to because lots of the times we had sword drills, so it was a lot of fun. After evening service, we'd head home and watch Walt Disney before bed. That was a typical Sunday for my family. From this background and heritage, I feel it is important for me to try to be in church on Sunday. Corey and I have attended many churches in other towns when we are not here, which seems to be more frequent all the time. We have found that if we go to church with an attitude of how we can worship and serve the Lord, we are the ones that come home blessed. Most Sunday afternoons, I spend resting and enjoying time with my family. I could probably do better about reaching out to others and maybe need to think about my buying and selling on the Sabbath. <laughs> we didn't have as much problem with this in the past because most stores were closed on Sunday. If people would stop buying, stores would start closing again. As Christ said in Mark 2, 27, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. God instituted the Sabbath to glorify himself, but also bless, yeah, to glorify himself. But it also blesses man by giving him a day of rest from his labors. The Pharisees turned it into a burden and made man a slave to their maraud of man-made regulations. Christ claimed he was greater than the Sabbath, and thus was God. Based on that authority, Christ could in fact reject the Pharisees' regulations concerning the Sabbath and restore God's original intention for the Sabbath, observing to be blessing to both God and man, not a burden. We should strive to follow what the Lord has for us. He gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit to lead us through this life. I encourage you to seek the Lord regarding the Sabbath and to see if there is anything that he would want you to change. I know I will look at it differently. And as my daughter said this week, I thought it was a good quote. We should live with more heart knowledge and less head knowledge. And that's it. I'm going to close in prayer. Father, thank you for giving me the strength and the wisdom and the words that you would want me to speak today. And we ask that we would help us to observe this day and that it would be honoring and glorifying to you. And we ask that you would lay your healing hands upon those that can't be with us this day and we and protect over those that are traveling. And we ask all this in your precious, precious name. Amen.